welcome back. Welcome to episode five of of the Boiler Shed. Thank you for all of your support up until now and watching all the previous episodes if you have done. If not, they're all in a playlist now on my on my YouTube channel. This week we had a delivery of some timber for for a few more bits around the workshop. So these two by fours are for a, like a big layout table I want to make. And then these big long four meter tongue and groove boards I'm bringing in now are for some cladding I want to put on the wall behind my bench. The, the cladding will kind of feel a bit warmer so there's not so much just breeze blocks around as well as being a nice place to eventually have tools on the wall and a tool cabinet and that kind of thing. Putting them up was actually a little bit more work than I than I thought. I had to put battens on the wall first, raw plug all of those in and then screw to those battens rather than raw plugging each one to the wall. It's easier to just, just do the battens. I ripped one of the boards down the middle for the for the two ends of the cladding and painted these the hive colour. You'll see that in a second. It's really nice to be finally making shavings in the workshop using my my tools for once rather than although they're still my tools I mean not kind of doing construction work for once um, getting back to a bit of bit of woodworking is lovely making some shavings in the workshop it's nice to have my toolbox here finally these boards are um, Scots Pine Tongue and Groove. They came in longer lengths than I imagined. I thought they were coming in 2.4 meters and I was just going to keep them that length and put them straight on the wall. Um, they turned out to be 4.1, which was fine. Didn't really matter, or 4.2 because I could cut them in half and put them on the wall at that height. The length of them wasn't really important. I just wanted them to come below the height of my bench and up as far as they can um, towards the ceiling. Once I'd had them all cut and kind of worked out how many I needed, I could work out the order in which I wanted them. Because I'd cut them in half, I could kind of book match every other pair of them and a lot of them were kind of had nice pips tiny little knots so I could arrange them in a nice nice way something that it's only ever going to be me that notices it but just brings out a little bit of joy when I look at the wall these battens are much smaller than I imagined I, I thought I already did the slightly larger ones um, Hence, I put in quite a few of them, just because I'm aware there is going to be some weight on the wall. Um, but I think, after fitting it all, I think they will be plenty strong enough. It took a surprising amount of time to get all these boards on it it's a lot of screws um, as well as a lot of up and down the ladder um, ended up um, doing it over an evening and the next morning just because it tired me out going up and down that ladder one of the main challenges of getting this this cladded area on the wall is there is a socket within it that I've put in place and I've, I've chosen to go around it leave that socket where it is um, I think it will look really neat once it's all set in there and you don't see any of the conduit like you do on all the other sockets around unfortunately because the battens I attached to the wall are smaller than I thought um, the conduit doesn't go behind the cladding so I had to cut the conduit short 
and just run the the bare cable underneath, which was which was fine, not too much work. Um, here you can see me marking it in the completely wrong place. remove the the marks in the wrong place. This area will eventually be kind of a backdrop for videos as well. Such a luxury to be able to walk all the way around my bench where where it will finally be. And to have that nice timber background I think will be really effective for kind of nice warm looking videos rather than just a white breeze block background again working towards that kind of positive feeling space that I spoke about last time just a place where I want to be and I want to I want to be working and hopefully where where students will want to be working as well The second board, which the socket is within, was a little more challenging just because it was most of the board I had to take out and just leave very thin, almost just the tongue on the edge. I did try and chose to keep this board in one piece rather than taking it in two just because it just looks that little bit neater, just for the sake of being a little bit delicate before I put it on the wall. Once they were in place, I could I could get that socket back on the wall. Um, it was a little bit of a fiddle because I did cut cut the the recess in the cladding quite tight because I wanted it to be nice and neat because it is directly behind me on the bench. Um, but once he was in, it was perfect, nice and neat. Then I could wire the socket back up. For my next jobs was just sealing in around the the door and the windows. There was still a few air gaps and kind of a draft coming in um, so I used some expanding foam just to to fill those in before starting to box in around the window and actually putting a new window sill on as well these were just some of the the leftover cladding boards um, it's such nice nice pine that I thought rather than getting getting any other timber in I could just use the what was left I took out the MDF window sill. I was just a little bit sick of seeing it. So, although it's not ideal for the window sill, they're they're not quite thick enough. And because there's two boards on the window sill now, and they're tongue and groove, I have got the V on the window sill, which isn't really a problem. But it will just gather a bit of dust and crap in it, which I'd usually try and avoid. Kind of any grooves on a horizontal surface, especially one that's going to have a lot, of, a lot of stuff on it. But it's fine, it's the timber I had, not really a problem. These boards around the door just kind of cover up the gap between the two skins of the wall that was kind of left open. Um, so it just kind of makes it all feel a little bit more finished off. I could kind of clamp them in place with um, by bending some of the battens and bits of wood I had around. This is something that we used to use at, at West Dean called a shimbari frame I believe. The musical instrument students use it a lot. Usually have a kind of framework with these traditionally timber. We had um, carbon fibre ones that you just kind of bend to apply clamping pressure in a very specific place. Um, but just quite a neat way of doing it. The windowsill I screwed into place just because the block work wasn't entirely flat and I wanted it to be just a little more secure.
could then move on to starting to put together the layout table. This is something that I really missed in my workshop, my previous workshop at home. I just didn't have the space to have any other surface other than my workbench, which meant clamping up and laying things out and um, all that had to happen on the workbench, which meant if there is something clamped up, then it kind of halts any other work you can do. Um, so this is quite an, a, a crucial part of the workshop, actually. I've, added, I've done it slightly higher than my workbench, just so it's a nice standing height. And yeah, I'm really pleased with it. It's, it's a nice solid table, just really roughly put together, really. But it's perfect for what I need it for. I don't think I'm going to anchor this table to the floor because I quite like the idea of having it movable so I can clear out the middle of the space middle of the room if I ever needed to. I use these big coach bolts partly because they look cool and partly just to make it make sure it's nice and strong and eventually I can take it apart. I wasn't quite convinced on the dimensions of it so I thought if I leave a lot of it just dry together then I'll be able to take it back apart if I ever needed to in the future. pleased with how quickly this table went together. Just a very simple construction really, but strong enough. You see me sometimes I'd reach for the impact driver to put in the the coach bolts and then sometimes I just quite naturally reach reach for a spanner or kind of the hand tool equivalent if you like. Although it seems like I'm trying to kind of force my woodworking philosophy onto this kind of construction work. Although it's just something uh, something about driving a screw in by hand that I just quite enjoy. There's a YouTuber called Wrangler Star and Cody from there often talks about things giving him the fizz. And when I first started watching him I didn't really get what he meant by that, but now having built my collection of tools and having been working for myself and building things for a bit of time now I completely appreciate what he means and there's something about driving a screw in with the right screwdriver that just perfectly fits that head and it's, it's, and it's not a cheap screw that is poorly made but it's a high quality thing and you've drilled the right size pilot hole there's just something about that which just brings a little bit of satisfaction to me and that's something I'll, I want to talk about in the future as well in relation to woodworking hand tools. I left the, the top of this table as a full sheet because I hadn't quite decided on the dimensions as I mentioned earlier. Um, once I'd stood it up I quite quickly decided that I, I did want to take the edges off so unfortunately I've returned the track saw to the gentleman that lent it to me so I wanted a fairly clean cut, so my only option was a handsaw. And this was thicker, 25mm ply, so it was a bit of work. But the other little job we did this week was replace the old tube lights with nice LEDs. So there's four strip lights in here, and two have been replaced already with nice LED lights, um, but there was still two remaining. So I, the only thing that held that up was I didn't have a ladder long enough. So now I've got my my nice ladder I can I've replaced those lights and it just makes such a difference to have bright and light and the right temperature the right color of light as well you don't want it kind of feeling like you're in Tesco and it's too like surgical I can now start doing a few of the kind of niceties in the workshop um, a lot of that will happen in the next episode you'll see and you'll see the desk that I'm sat at now and the pictures on the wall and that kind of thing in the bookshelf above me. Um, but for now, I just put up this poster. This poster is something I worked on in the first lockdown. I've made a, a teaching handout with all of these hand-painted illustrations. And once I'd finished painting them all, I decided that it would actually make a really nice kind of botanical poster-esque kind of thing. So I, I sold the 
the A3 versions of this poster on my website. They're actually still for sale. The link is in the description. Christ, I'm turning into a YouTuber. Um, if you want to purchase one of those. I put the a nice piece of wood on the wall as well. Not for any particular reason. This is a piece of um, streaky brown oak that I just really like. Just fills a big blank wall, really. So next time we'll do a little bit more work on the bench, some actual woodworking, and like I said, do some of the niceties around the workshop, so getting it feeling like a like a more comfortable place and not like a like an old cow shed. Thank you for watching.